Okay. My husband is going to be clicking for me today, so thank you. Um, I just want to thank you all for coming to see me and thanks for having me. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Beck Kleiner. I am an art director, illustrator. Um, what else am I? I'm a graphic designer. I'm also a mum and a servant, so, yeah. And I have two crazy kids, um, Levi and Esme, and I, um, you know, I've recently had a bit of public attention with my Aussie Legends Alphabet series, and I'm here to talk to you what led me to this point. Um, I was given the theme Beyond to talk about, and I thought the best way to attack it was going to be with the alphabet. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to go through the whole alphabet, I'm just going to pick a few. Okay. Okay, so P is for panic attack. Um, so I'd like to share with you a moment that happened to me about once a month for um, the last – before about the last couple of years ago, I would have a good old-fashioned panic attack. Um, I would usually have this to my husband, my poor husband, where he would bear the brunt and what would happen is I would start going – oh, my God, what have I done with my life? I haven't achieved what I wanted to achieve. I thought I would live up to so much more potential, all those kind of things. And I wanted to be an illustrator, an artist. I wanted to save the world. I had all these big, big um, ambitions. And this is what my panic attack usually looked like. Yep. Um, I felt like I'd gone in into my 30s and I just hadn't achieved what I wanted to achieve. I know that that doesn't sound like your 30s doesn't sound very old, but... For me, I saw all these people in the 20s achieving all these great things and having the confidence to do it, and I just didn't feel like I was on that right path. So my husband would um, calmly and warily respond, Becky, you're an amazing graphic designer, you're an art director, you've had a great career, you've won awards, you know, you've also got this family, you're so lucky, and I'd be like, ugh. And, you know, I'm... <laughs> I'd be like, I'm so lucky, I feel so ungrateful, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's true, and I don't want to sound ungrateful, like I had had a really great career. I'd um, been at the Monkees and at Moon for a long time. I just want to show you some of the work I did. So, um, yeah, so I basically, this is stuff I did for Foxtel. I've done a lot on Ikea, which was super fun. I've, um, yeah, these are some fun things I've done for Ikea. Um, I've worked on Eubank, like some big clients like Telstra, you know, and I've learnt a lot. Um, here's a little video. Robin, do you want to just press? Oh, no. Okay, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> this is a guide dog's ad idea. This job's about giving somebody independence. 24-7, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no holidays. Oh. Um... How do you feel about making life or death decisions? I think I'm pretty good. Training's 10 years. Okay. Because you can't interact with anyone and you can only walk in a straight line. A straight line. What do you mean? Okay. Do you frighten easily? No. Yes, I've been horror movies. Good. <laughs> um. Mm. I have a biscuit. You can't do that. This job's about resisting temptation. Okay. Um, what's the pay? Love. Just love. Car? How about a car? You get love. Hmm. What about presents and gifts? Hmm. No. Oh. Yeah, this, this ad was like a highlight of my career in advertising, but I just felt like I got to the point where I knew I wanted to do something for myself, which brings me to um, the second letter and the theme of the talk. Oh, no, go back. Go, you're running. Come back. Yeah, yeah, no, the next one. No, no. Okay, okay, it's not up. It's B is for beyond. <laughs> I felt like I could go beyond what I had achieved and been traditionally mapped out for me. Um, I had no idea how to do this, though. Um, I would try and map it out but reach a dead end. Um, especially having a kid, I felt like... You know, I couldn't have this unstable career, um, you know, especially with daycare pickups and all that kind of stuff. It just felt really hard. Um, so, however, actually, it actually took the birth of my um, second child for me to go on maternity leave and um, come to the point where I thought, well, now's the time to prove it because I didn't have a stable job. 
I didn't know where to start though. And um, here's an example of when I Googled um, create a block, that's what I came up with. Um, funny enough, when you Google on Getty, it comes up with a lot of men looking <laughs> very <laughs> sorry for themselves in beanies. It kept on coming up, so that's why I included the slide. And that is what I felt like. Okay, so I is for Instagram. Okay, so um, I often pay out Instagram if you know me. I feel like it kind of portrays this false sense of like this perfect life and everything like that. But for me, actually, Instagram was a way that I started my new career. Um, and it all started opening an account called, drumroll, uh, Beck Finer Illustrations. So, um, yeah, very imaginative, I know. But as soon as I opened um and publish my first illustration, it kind of gave me like a coming out as an illustrator to everyone in the world. Okay, so I was so scared I would not get one single like and everyone would think I was a fraud. I, I, I've been illustrating since I was very young, but I kind of never told anyone. It was like this deep, dark secret of mine. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. Look, it's not – I did not go viral. <laughs> I had about, you know, a few hundred friends on Instagram, but they were all friends in the industry. And, you know, I'm friends with a lot of illustrators and amazing designers and all those kind of people, and they really um, encouraged me to keep going, which was amazing. And I also made a promise that I was going to do – like a post or two um, every couple of days just to keep that momentum going. And it was through this momentum that led me to my next letter, which is O is for obsessive. Okay, so once I started the process, I kind of couldn't stop. I think the hard part, as everyone knows, is when, when you start something, it's that's the hard bit. But once you kind of keep it going, it, that, that's when it actually becomes really fun. Um, not to say I published everything. I wasn't so hard. I was – but I just wasn't so hard on myself. I kind of felt like you just need to get it out there. Don't be so sensitive about your work. I think that was my thing. Um, here are some of the illustrations I started to do. It's a bit, a bit washed out, but you can see. Yep. And I started to find my style, which I describe as kind of vector-based and poppy. Um, I also really enjoyed tapping into my humorous side. If any, anyone knows me, I'm pretty jokey, so I kind of like my work to reflect those kind of things. Well, that's not so jokey, but, you know. <laughs> um, okay, so R is for ripple effect. Okay, so once I began to make my work um, public, you know, what happened is people started coming up to me and collaborating and I also started to coming up with, you know, my, more ideas. Um, I just want to introduce you to my first and um, um, one of the highlights so far of working. My Yiddish emojis. <laughs> Okay, so I collaborated with two people on this and it's one of my favourite uh, things I've done so far, as I said. Okay, so there are a lot of emojis out there but there are no Yiddish emojis and, you know, I feel like you need need something to express words like oi vey and um, I'm schwitzing and um, what a, you're a verstunkener, all those kind of things. Nothing exists in emoji land. Okay, but how do you make a Yiddish emoji? So I basically came up with two characters which were based loosely on my own two grandparents and I used their gestures to start um, coming up with these. So, you know, there's my old grandpa such as schlep, schmoozing, I'm schwitzing. So I kind of just used their hand gestures. It was, it was really fun to, to come up with this. And... Um, and it, it did really well. And um, I basically don't know how the world existed without it. I use it all the time on my phone. I encourage you all to uh, download your Yiddish emojis today. And um, I thought basically I'd achieved my career highlight and I would retire now, but um, I kept the ball rolling. So these are my mum's milestones, um, which I co-created. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen those baby milestones out there. I, I started having um, a baby and so did lots of my friends and I kept on seeing these cards that you put next to your baby that's like, my baby walked for the first time or like my baby farted for the first time. You know, it was all these like very sickly sweet, beautiful moments, but, you know, it didn't really feel me. And I I'd, I'd just had a baby and I basically <laughs> – <laughs> felt like I should be celebrated for pushing the side of a football thing out of me. And, you know, and your life changes dramatically after you have a baby, so you should celebrate this. 
So, you know, I got my, these are all these cards that I illustrated and designed. So um, I got my skinny jeans halfway up my thighs. I didn't take about my baby's movements all day. Today I made the effort. I'd often find like I was only shaving one leg and that was like a big achievement for me. Um, finally, I felt um, my boobs didn't feel like they would burst. Very sexy. I'm now on first name basis with the pharmacist, which I'd like go to the pharmacist quite regularly. Um, I also came up with a, um, oh, this bet, by the way, went really well. Um, you know, mums loved it, media loved it. It was kind of my first taste of something to come. Um, so we also came up with a set of greeting cards, which I also loved. I felt like, you know, when you give a baby like your first birthday and I felt like, why does the baby get a birthday card? Again, you know, we should be celebrating mum. So it was a happy gay birthday part. And you can't really see, but it's a pair of legs. Like, do you see? Like, sorry, it's just a bit blown out. But basically, you know, I remember one night I was sitting in bed and I was like illustrating it. I was like, legs. I was like, yeah, that's good. I was like, but something's missing. I was like, ah, party popper. So like, you know, and um, it's, and then if you go to the next one, um, you know, you just had a baby and your boobs are looking the bottom. So, you know, like just really fun stuff. Um, and I feel like um, basically, um, sorry, one second. I felt like that was, you know, being just your own boss meant that I could be a bit rude or anything like that. It was, it was my own decisions and I loved being um, in control of those kind of things. So that was really important for me. Okay, next. Okay, this is a, um, a food illustration series I collaborated with a food photographer called Top That. So those were donuts. A little give toast a chance. Oh, and then I've, I also started experimenting and actually like not keeping myself in that humorous genre all the time. So Parlor X is a great fashion house and I partnered with them for a whole fashion series. And I also kept my graphic design career going. So, um, but I just started adding more of my illustration flair to everything. So I started just evolving my style and getting to work on projects that I really wanted to work on. Okay. A, okay, so that brings me to, and then one night, so sorry, after putting my four-year-old to bed and being a bit bored about teaching him the alphabet, I decided to go in, into my studio and create the Aussie Legends alphabet. So A is for, um, <laughs> A is for alphabet. Okay. So I didn't think it was anything incredible at the time. I, I honestly didn't. I just, as I said, I was looking for an alphabet poster for my son's room. I, I found, you know, I said it before, B is, A is for apple and B is for banana. I found that a little bit boring. And I also wanted to start teaching him about some cool Aussie legends at the same time. And that's how the Aussie legends alphabet was um, born. Um, I also decided like there's, as I found out, there's 26 letters in the alphabet and um, I felt like, how am I going to do this all? So I decided as I'd done my Instagram, I was just going to do one um, letter per, um, which is creeping. Um, <laughs> it's a little creepy. Um, I was going to do one letter per day for 26 days. So that's kind of how I um, approached it all. Otherwise, I just don't think I ever would have finished it. Okay, Robin. So um, I've just – don't worry, I'm not going to take you through all 26 letters either. Um, these are just some of my favourites. So, you know, A is for Adam Goods. Keep going. Um, B, I did Bob Hawke, you know, the classic beer. You know, I just really tried to bring to life their characteristics and his beer belly. Um, I love the Kathy Freeman one. It took me a long time to do, but I was pretty happy with that. Oh, I love Dame. Couldn't do without Dame. Eddie Marbo, you know, these are all really important people. I, I, I basically tried, the way I was doing it is I tried to imagine what would Australia be without these people and if that felt disappointing then I knew they were Aussie legends. You know, take away Cap and Kim and a muffin top and you don't have, you know, it's just not Australia. Um, Lee Chin I loved because who doesn't love Lee <laughs> um, She And I loved making her outfits and Molly came together very well and Steve. Uh, and, you know, I tried to mix it up like I wanted to have scientists. You know, Tim is an amazing um, climate um, scientist, so I put him in there too, which I loved. Oh, wait, stop, stop. 
Um, yeah, so basically I said some images were more difficult um, than others. But, yeah, I just – I basically wanted to show a diversity. And um, it's funny, everyone always asks me with this alphabet series, is it really for kids? And my answer is, yeah, I feel like each – each of these Aussie legends starts a really interesting conversation with the kids. It's I wanted to show everyone, especially kids, that it's it's normal to have diversity in society and that's a good thing. You know, I'm talking diversity, I'm talking gender, cultural background, race, everything. And I think in this political, um, current political climate, it's really, really important for kids to see how important diversity is and it's this diversity what makes Australia an incredible place. Um, I also felt like it's pretty crazy that most kids probably know who, more who Donald Trump is than any of our other Aussie legends, and I felt like that was a that was a little sad, and we had a little bit of a message to bring home. It's what's been amazing since this whole thing is a lot of schools have actually um, requested the posters, which is amazing, and I think that there's something missing in it in the school curriculum. Um, yeah, and I also had to try and be a bit ruthless. Like, I, you know, I'm not very sporty. And so I, you know, people got a bit upset that I left Don Bradman out. But, you know, I chose Bob Hawke and Dame Edna because I, I love them over those. So, you know, there were some hard decisions to make. And I, um, I and also as I started getting into the, the U's and the, the X's and the Y's and the Z's, I was in Struggle Street. So um, I basically had a bit of artistic licence. Um, John Utzon, he gave, he's, you know, obviously not born in Australia, but he gave us the opera house. So for me, I feel like he's an honorary Australian. So I really like that one. <sighs> Michael makes me a bit hot. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, again, hit X, you know, my conscience. Oh, and this is, this is probably my favourite, um, Shazza and Dazza. So I, I, I got to Zed and I was like, oh, I was like Adriana Zumba, uh, Carla Zampati. I, I, I just couldn't think of anyone that like re I really wanted to end it on a high. So I um, I thought I was fishing to go with an everyday Australian because I felt like these type of people, you know, the Shazzes, the Dazzes and the Wazzes are what makes Australia a truly great country. So, yeah, I, I really loved that one. Okay, so, okay, so I got to Zen and thought, now what? Um, as I said, I've been spurred along by friends on Instagram when I was releasing them, but I kind of didn't know what to do with it. So I decided let's make it into a poster. Um, and I'm far from a tech guru, but I do know Shopify. Um, so I basically opened a Shopify account and really simply just made um, a website with one product, which was my poster to sell. And um, I also decided that I wanted to give a bit of love back to one of my favourite legends, which was Fred Hollows, and I um, – I gave him um, – I've given – so a portion of the charity goes to the Fred Hollows Foundation, which I love. So, okay, so that was all ready and so I was ready to kind of release it into the world. Oh, yeah, that's my website. It's nothing fancy. It's like shop now, click. I kept on trying to find templates that just were one product and I <laughs> struggled to find one but I found one in the end. Okay, H is for holy crap. So you never know how something will be received and the result, I, um, you know, I was really genuinely surprised. It all started with that um, video that I showed you at the beginning. This amazing SBS journalist did one video and it kind of went quite viral. Um, if you want to keep it. Yeah, and I also had like, and then, you know, after that SBS video um, happened, I started to get all this amazing response. Basically, another career highlight has been, I am now officially Lee Lin Chin's Twitter icon. So, again, I can retire. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I keep on checking to make sure I'm still her Twitter icon. Is that weird? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, and I also had like amazing, like Dame Edna and the Victor Chang Institute reposting it. I had like... People like Kath and Kim, the executive producer, wrote to me and I was just like, you've made my day. So it was like things like that. I also had In Excess reposted. I had Tim Flannery put it on the climate website. So, yeah, that was astounding. And then I had all these articles run. It was literally pretty, pretty crazy. I also had the National Library of Australia order me, order a copy for their collection, which made my mum pretty happy. <laughs> um, yeah, and as I said, not to mention schools and libraries from around Australia ordering them and it also had like places like from Mongolia the um, international school order one so I said can you take a photo of it 
kind of imagined it, you know, in this very glamorous place. And it's ended up in Pakistan and everywhere, so which has been pretty crazy. I also um, was asked to appear on the Channel 7 morning show with Kyle and Larry, Kylie and Larry. <laughs> and, yeah, it was pretty surreal. I went on and it was, um, yeah, everything was all around the studio and probably the biggest – another highlight was I got my hair and makeup done and um, I looked – more tan than Larry, I think. <laughs> okay, so P is for, does anyone remember what P is for? Again, that's right, panic attack. <laughs> okay, so um, you can go to the next one, Robin. Oh, no. Oh, no, back. Oh, I had Kim Kardashian's face again, but I'd like photoshopped it in multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so from all the media attention, orders were flooding um, in and I had a few um, things where I actually made the website live which without actually the posters arriving in my house, which was a rookie error, but I thought what could go wrong? Things did go wrong. So um, first of all, the stock wasn't right, so I sent it back and um, then – Another lot arrived and it there was all this rain and it got damaged in a truck. So, like, I was like, oh, my God. And orders were flooding in from all this attention. And I was also attempted to do some freelance work at that time and I basically had a meltdown. The moral of the story is uh, get your ducks in a row before you went out because I had, you know, Betty from <laughs> Northern Territory going, where's my post done? I was like, it's coming, it's coming. So, yeah, that was a bit stressful. And I also um, – um, not to mention I had two crazy kids that I had to juggle and raise. Um, do you want to go to the next? Ah, oh, that's Esme. That was kind of the chaos at the time. It was pretty I, – I lost a quite a lot of weight as a result. <laughs> um, keep on going. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Coming back to Kim. Okay, so then – oh, and this is kind of what happened at the end of the week. <laughs> I was like <laughs> – it was actually – I'd have a glass of wine and I actually wouldn't feel – anything because I was in such a state of anxiety from it all. Um, but, okay, I just want to quickly touch upon that mum kind of uh, creative juggle thing that I was going through. I, I never truly get it right and I often put the kids to bed and I'm up way into the night trying to get things done but I don't regret it for a moment. You know, I, I love being self-employed and being able to go and pick up my kid and not having to sneak out of work is something that I, I really truly um, enjoy. Okay, and plus... I have a very supportive partner. Um, yeah, I'm lucky enough, Robin Finer. Um, yeah, he, but he's an amazing creative and it can be a little lonely working by yourself and I, it's amazing always being able to um, bounce ideas off him and he was pushing me and telling me to get out there and not to be um, afraid of failing. And, you know, which brings me to my next letter. Not. You're not very good at this. I'm, I'm bringing this out. Okay, so R is for rejection. Um, yeah, so I intended this originally to be a kid's book, this poster. Um, and here is an example of – I sent this to numerous publishing houses before this went crazy, before I got it out there. You know, thank you for sending us your book proposal to consider. Your illustrations are wonderful. However, we only publish a few select for children's books, blah, blah, blah. Um, good luck with this developing this project and, and finding a home for it. Um, so that was like a really nice letter. <laughs> I usually didn't get any letter. So I was like, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I, I decided to eventually do it as a poster because I couldn't afford, you know, self-publishing a book is, is super expensive. So I just went for the cheapest option basically. And um, But by doing this as a poster, it was pretty incredible because I actually proved to all the publishers that um, – that this was successful and that was something – and by the reaction. And I think that's something um, – I think that's something that I found that sometimes if you want to get someone to take notice of it and invest in you, you often have to prove yourself, which is not necessarily a bad thing. And it's funny because I had started to get publishers come knocking on my door and that same publisher came knocking at my door and said, we love your idea. And I said, wow. <laughs> like, you actually sent me it. <laughs> <laughs> she was shocked. <laughs> but I was like, it's not your fault. You know, I understand. It's You're getting that response. So, um, yeah, and the, as I said, they came knocking on my door. Like I had five or six and I currently just signed with HarperCollins and an alphabet, um, Aussie Alphabet Legends um, book is coming to your shelf in October. So that's very, very exciting. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm nearly finished. All right. Um, and now I come back to the letter B. 
for beyond. Um, I'm coming to the end of my talk and I, you know, I wanted to come back to the theme beyond and how it important it is to push yourself beyond what you thought you could achieve. And it's never too late, you know. I'm kind of glad I didn't achieve everything I could in my 20s and I, I want to keep on pushing myself beyond, you know, well into my 90s. <laughs> um, and I, I think it's a good thing to push yourself out of your com comfort zone. Um, by the way, I don't get those panic attacks anymore um, and I haven't changed the world but I do feel a lot happier and I'm, I feel like I'm making people happy around me, which is a great thing. Um, my next mission is to do different alphabets from all around the world. I'm currently working on my American edition of the alphabet, which brings me to my final letter. E is for Ellen. <laughs> I'm totally getting on the Ellen show. That is my aim. <laughs> I've already like planned my outfit out in my head. Is that weird? And I'm like going to go on and steal all the goodie bags. That's my main aim. I just want to say thank you all for having me and I'd love to uh, answer any questions.